Hi, it's Dave. In this video, I'm going to be sharing why I think Tesla has a unique approach to solving for AI and why I think it's the right approach. All right, let's go to a 2012 blog post by Andre Karpathy, the head of Tesla AI. And in this October 22nd, 2012 post, he says the state of computer vision and AI, we are really, really far away. Here, Andre shares a photo and it's a funny photo actually. And he asked the question, what would it take for a computer to understand this image as you or I do? And the whole thing is it's not just about detecting objects, that's basic. It's to understand meaning and that is a much more complex and daunting task. So here's certain aspects or, or angles that Andre brings up. In order to understand this image, you have to understand a bunch of things. For example, you have to understand that there are a lot of people here, that there's they're standing in a hallway. There are three mirrors actually showing replicas, right, of people. You have to understand that. Um, you have to make out Obama, right, from just a few pixels, right? And he's in a suit and other people are in suits as well. And then there's one person in a suit who's standing on a scale. So you have to recognize the scale and the person. The person is adjusting the scale, trying to get his weight. And then you have Obama leaning his foot on the scale. So you need to understand kind of physics, right? And that foot is actually applying pressure on the scale. The person also on the scale is not aware that Obama is doing this, right? So the person is actually not looking toward Obama is looking just at the scale. You have to understand what that means. And then you have to understand there's lots of people in general are conscious of their weight. So the person who's on the scale might be seeing a much higher weight than he, than he expects. And that's going to be surprising. And further, he's in front of people. So that might actually be embarrassing, right? You have to understand that. Then look at Obama, you'll see him smirking, right? thinking that this could be a joke. And then the people behind him are thinking that it's funny and they're smiling. And so they're understanding the imminent right, surprise of this person on the scale and the state of mind that this person is gonna be in. And then this whole photo is even funnier because this is the president of the United States. And then to go on further, we have some ideas of what will happen next, right? Likely in just a few seconds, the person will get very surprised. Everyone is going to crack up and it'll be a harmless joke versus Obama's not going to put his foot on the scale for several minutes. There's not going to be a fight that breaks out or there's a whole like countless other possibilities that are probably unlikely in this situation. All right, by looking at this photo and in a half a second, we're making a ton of inferences, right? Just from a brief, brief glance and just to know what each pixel is about or to understand you know how it's laid out etc that's not enough we need a lot of prior knowledge right to get understanding now andre in this blog post he says that he's seen a lot of arguments that people need more data from images and video and they need to run some clever learning algorithm but in his opinion he thinks that the central problem will be as much about obtaining the right training data in the right form to support these inferences as it will be about making them and another kind of quote in this blog post is he says a seemingly inescapable conclusion for me is that we may also need embodiment and that is the only way to build computers that can interpret scenes like we do is to allow them to get exposed to all the years of structured coherent experiences that we have in any case he says we are very very far and this depresses me what is the way forward all right so what does all this mean and what does this mean especially for tesla's autonomous driving aspirations a few points here number one this is a long road and a very long road of artificial intelligence and computer vision that Tesla has set itself on. Easy driving, I think in my opinion, is easy, right? You're on a straight road or on a little curvy road, maybe turning corners is not that difficult. But then there are extreme edge cases or corner cases that make it very difficult and they can be very, very hard. And part of it is because we're relying on a whole nother world of knowledge to interpret the situation right, that we're in to make a decision. For example, let's say you're at a weird intersection you've never seen, be seen before. You know, the light signal lights are off and there's a bunch of cars and people are doing a bunch of gestures and facial expressions and you have to interpret how a car moves. And then you have to look around and see what people are doing on the corner. You see a person on the phone, they're not looking at the phone or you might see a stroller. And maybe in some situations, a stroller, you're more careful because, right, of how they're carrying or pushing the stroller. There's lots of different factors. In any case, there's a tremendous amount of additional knowledge that we rely on to understand the situations in real world. It's not just the surface, there's a whole iceberg, right, of understanding and previous knowledge from different situations that we rely on. And in that sense, um, Karpathy's blog in 2012 is asserting that it could be a very long time before neural nets can understand, right, 
the vast amount of this additional understanding and knowledge that is required to fully understand, let's say, a photo like this photo that I'm sharing here. All right, number two. Um, the flip side of this is that humans have some weaknesses. And when you look at driving, people get tired very easily. They're also really easily distracted. Let's say they're you know, looking at their cell phone. There's also stop and go traffic. For example, just a few weeks ago, you know, I saw a car next to me. It didn't stop, right? When there was complete stop and go traffic, the car stopped in front and you end up hitting the car in front. People just don't look, right? Um, very carefully sometimes um, when they're not attentive. Then you have drunk driving, right? Tons of deaths. So even if a car isn't as good as a human or an average human, in the most challenging of edge cases and corner cases, the autonomous driving car could still be safer overall because it could be mitigating right, and drive better than a human because it's not distracted. But on the flip side, an autonomous vehicle, at least in the beginning stages, let's say in the next couple of years, might not do as good as a human who's focused right, on in an edge case scenario. And in those cases, this could be life and death. And there could be actually fatal accidents, let's say with autonomous vehicles, in certain situations that kind of seem silly to humans. But it could save a lot of fatalities with um, in situations like driver distraction or drunk driving. Ultimately, I think it's about statistics and that will determine when full self-driving can go autonomous, when it can go truly robo-taxi and it can be safely used. Eventually though, I think it's inevitable. Computer vision is getting better exponentially. Neural nets are increasing in size and complexity and effectiveness. Compute power is just exponentially growing and we're getting better data collection and processing practices as well. Ultimately, computers win hands down, but I think the transition might be a bit tricky. All right, number three point, Tesla is solving one of the most challenging problems ever. And I think Tesla could unlock a huge amount of value. Just think about that Obama picture, right? For a second, in order for a robot, let's say to interact with people in that situation, let's say this was a real physical situation that happened or is happening. The robot in this picture would need to understand the picture. It would need to know what to do because for example, should it laugh along all the other people because it is a light, light joke? Or should the robot try to take the person off the scale? Or should the robot pull Obama's foot off? Should it say something? There's a ton of possibilities. And all of this is dependent on understanding. But once a computer, right, AI can understand the situations like a human does, then they're able to interact with that situation or humans um, or in that environment appropriately. And in my opinion, I'm not seeing another company that's tackling real world AI as aggressively as Tesla is. And I think it goes back to Andre Karpathy's realization back in 2012 in this blog post. He's basically saying, we don't need a surface understanding, right, of images. We need deep understanding of the situations, right, of these images. And that's what Tesla vision is all about. It's not just about seeing pixels. It's about understanding the world around. And think about this Obama situation in real life, hypothetically. Imagine if you're using a robot that had LiDAR, right? LiDAR is not gonna give any more understanding about the situation. It's just gonna tell where the objects are. It's not gonna read, right, the facial expressions and understand the situation like vision could eventually. And that's why I think vision is the better route and why Tesla, doubling down on vision, skipping radar is actually the right move and it's gonna pay off huge dividends in their efforts to solve real world AI. I think the road to a truly smart robot, a truly robot AI is going to be daunting, but Tesla's in the lead right now. It's gonna be interesting times ahead for sure. Tesla AI day is on October 19th, just in a couple of weeks. So uh, look forward to hearing more news. Anyways, I hope this has been helpful. If it has, go ahead, like, and subscribe. All my videos can be found as an audio podcast. Just search for Dave Lee on investing in your favorite podcast player. I'm also on Twitter at HeyDave7. All right, we'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks.